August 15th, 2012. Valve comes out with a new major update to their flagship team-based multiplayer game, Team Fortress 2, titled The Man vs. Machine Update. The main piece of content was a brand new game mode, of which the update was named after, Man vs. Machine. It's a PvE game mode where six players need to work together to fight off a massive horde of robotic versions of the characters. And many years later, it seems the machines were the ones to have the last laugh. How did this happen? What led us to this fate? And what can be done about this to finally put it to an end? Let's say you want to play on some casual servers. Maybe hop on Dust Bowl and have some good times. You're enjoying yourself, but then you start to hear something a little strange. And then it starts multiplying. Then they start spamming the chat. And to really put the nail in the coffin, they decline a vote kick and kick you instead. Then this exact sequence of events happens for every single game. This was the average TF2 experience on casual servers in 2020. These bots pose a serious issue to the game, as they can scare off new players by giving them a negative impression by making the game unplayable. A new player wouldn't know anything about community servers, so for all they know, every game might be like this. And for a good while, it really felt like it. Today, I'm going to go over a brief history of the TF2 bot crises, from when they first started to appear, to the many attempts to put an end to this madness. It only makes sense to start by looking at the bots already in the game. On June 10th, 2010, Valve released the Mac update, which added Apple Mac support, also some free earbuds if you play TF2 on a Mac before August 16th, 2010. Oh boy, gotta claim that. But most importantly here, it added a training game mode. And while one half of it consists of basic tutorials to learn some of the class mechanics, the other half is a practice mode that lets you play against bots in a select few maps and game modes. These guys have difficulty settings, and they're a decent way to get used to each of the classes in a private setting. Oh boy, how far these bots have come. In modern casual servers, there's no name scarier than Omegatronic. I remember a point in time where practically every server you joined would have one or more of these bad boys running around and, uh, doing this. But Omegatronic was far from the first person to design bots. They often have names tied to them. Catbot, MyGot, and now Omegatronic. While cheating and hacking is par for the course in many other multiplayer games like CSGO or Call of Duty, this gets cranked up to 100 when a game goes without updates for extended periods of time. Black Ops 3 has a pretty bad hacking problem, and that's because it's just one of the many yearly released Call of Duty games, so it's rarely maintained. The same problem persists to a worse degree in TF2, which is pretty well known at this point for its last major update, Jungle Inferno from 2017, being the last major update the game received before being largely abandoned. Besides the yearly Christmas cosmetics and Halloween events, which mostly rely on community-made content anyways. This makes it a pretty easy target for bored teenage programmers to make these bots to get a rise out of people. 2017 seems to be the year where bots really got their footing. While I have no doubt that some people were experimenting with them years prior, 2017 saw the first outbreak of cat bots. It all started when someone developed an open source Linux-based cheat. Cat bots were designed to use the cheat to run around the map and use a form of aimbot to automatically kill anyone in view. Sound familiar? That's because it's a more simplified version of the bots that are yet to come. Eventually, all the catbots and the creator were banned, but the open source bot technology is what would later be modified and used in all future hacker bots. Hence why even the ones today still carry a lot of these characteristics. 
After the banning, things were quiet for a good while. Every so often, bots would be popping up in lobbies, but it was by no means unmanageable. 2018 and 2019 were neither better nor worse. Things were quiet for a while. But 2020 is where things went from bad to worse. With everyone being stuck at home, it left many to turn to gaming as an outlet, with TF2 being one of the big ones. This also left bored coders to their own devices as well. In April of that year, Valve confirmed that the source code to both TF2 and CSGO had been leaked. This makes designing TF2 bots easier and more accessible than ever, as you could just examine how the code in the game works in terms of bot behavior, and more importantly, they could see just how any potential anti-cheat can be bypassed and bots could be optimized. This also allows for easier additions to be made to the bots. Eventually, killing everyone on the map got boring, so then developers got them to do a lot more than just spin around and kill people. They were made to be even more toxic. They spammed more questionable things in chat, started using the voice chat to annoy people, and in some more recent iterations, they could vote kick you, making the game more unplayable than it already was before. My God bots would soon begin to infest servers, and spam some pretty racially insensitive things in chat. There's actually quite a lot to get into with the My God rabbit hole. They used to be a clan of individuals whose prime directive is to hack and troll people for their own amusement. They seemed to be primarily interested in source games, like Counter-Strike, Half-Life, and of course, TF2. It seems that it's up in the air as to whether or not the bots were actually run by someone associated with My God, as the original clan peaked long ago in 2004, with it completely disappearing from the public eye long before the new wave of bots infiltrated the game. Not to mention, My God only ever used hacks and cheats, and not bots. As their main goal is about having fun at others' expense, and bots wouldn't be as fun. These unscheduled yet somewhat consistent upticks in bot activity would soon become known as bot waves, and it would be the term used when discussing any new influxes of these cheating scoundrels. Around 2021, we saw the rise of Omegatronic in yet another bot wave. Now the real cool thing that these bots do is spam links so you can spend actual dollars so the bots don't attack you in game. Why would someone buy this? I genuinely don't know. You know what? Buying immunity doesn't stop you from getting bots in your lobby. It just stops the bots from targeting you. This means that if you want to have some fun on servers, you still need other people to play the game with you. And unless the entire server gets bot immunity, you won't be able to actually play the game as intended. So basically, if you buy this, you're dumb. Now I feel it's an appropriate time to discuss why someone would choose to do this. Why go through the effort to yoink Catbot's AI, modify it, and get thousands of these things just to ruin the game for everyone else? Well, there are a number of reasons for this. The reason behind the bots is just to get a rise out of people, get them angry, get some attention. But why TF2 specifically? The source code leak made it so it was easier to modify bots. If you know extensively how the pathfinding on normal bots work, then making a cheating bot shouldn't be all too difficult. And when you pair that with the fact that the game hasn't gotten an update since 2017, and the fact that there's a lot of kids playing TF2, the kind that get angry and emotional, it becomes a really easy target to go for. TF2's an old game, so being able to cheat on it isn't that difficult. So in the meantime, it seems that these bots are just going to continue running around and making things bad. But the community wouldn't be taking this lying down for much longer. On May 26th, 2022, a group of TF2-centered content creators would get together and put together a little bit of a movement. Hashtag save TF2. The intentions were clear. Valve, fix your game! So people started tweeting. A lot of people started tweeting. Content creators, fans, new and old alike, free to plays, people who can't pay their rent because they bought a fifth Australian weapon. Everyone got together to tag Valve on Twitter.com. And they actually got a response. For the first time in nearly two years, the TF2 Twitter account puts out a tweet saying they're gonna get around to fixing things. And while a lot of people rejoiced, some a bit skeptical because of the lack of communication, Valve quickly gets to work on a fix. And for months, the bots seem to have left. Things were pretty peaceful for a number of months, 
and people were able to enjoy casual servers again. The number of bots have since gone up, however, as developers continue to work their way around the new fixes. It's a constant tug of war that'll probably never see a proper ending until TF2 servers go offline. But honestly, the current place we're in doesn't seem too bad. TF2 is a pretty <laughs> cool game, so if you've been avoiding it because of the bots or the lack of direct communication from Valve, then I suggest playing on community servers or just getting on now. There are bots every once in a while, but for the most part it really isn't that bad. That or maybe I'm just coping because I want more people to play TF2, this game is really good.